you should have the distinct advantage of um, having already some of this on the board. I was about to draw it all up just so it's ready to go and do the addition of ordnance. However, I actually thought it would be worth, like these are the kinds of things which I know, which I often forget that sometimes people don't know. So I'm going to very quickly run you through, how, how do I do the component graphs? Like you should be able to do these without too much thought, like these are common graphs, okay? So let me begin with the 3 sin x. You can see on my, um, on my set of axes, right, I've got my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do you remember how I chose that number? Why 5? Yeah, good. So the range here is negative 3 to 3. The range here is negative 2 to 2. And I'm adding these things. So if, for example, the 3 and the 2 coincide, I add them and I'll get 5. Right? Um, or if the negative 3 and the negative 2 coincide, I'll add them together and I'll get negative 5. Right? Now, as you'll see, I don't end up using that entire range. But I don't know that from the beginning. So therefore, I draw my graph with the expectation I might need it. So 3 sin x, I'm going to go right up to 3, that'll be my range. Okay? Now you can see I've got my markers for 0, 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay? Sine starts at the origin, comes up and down, then goes down and up. Simple one, right? So the way I do this visually, I don't tend to do too many markers because it can start to cross over from, okay, now it's informative versus now it's just cluttered. Okay? So I look about halfway between there and there. Well, that'll give me 90 degrees. And that's where I'm going to get the peak of my sine curve, right, right there. There's my stationary point for sine. Uh, in the same way, I'm going to have a stationary point down here, halfway between 180 and 360, and it's going to be correspondingly down here at negative three, right? So I've got that point there. Okay. Knowing that I pass through one, two, three, four, five points, that's all I need. That's all I need. So I can draw my graph now. Up, stationary point, down, stationary point, and I'm finished. Okay. You should be able to do that roughly and quickly without any extra thought or working or anything like that. So there's 3 sin x. When I do 2 cos 2x, you know two things. Number one, amplitude has changed. It's no longer 3, it's 2. Okay, so it's a little bit lower. And the other thing that's changed is the, it's the period, right? Um, the period is half as long. Or if you want to think about it the other way, um, the frequency is, well, it's twice as frequent. I, I tend to prefer thinking about frequency because then you don't have to reverse this number. If I see 2 cos 2x, I know it's twice as frequent. Or if it's 2 cos 3x, it's three times as frequent, and so on. <coughs> so therefore, usually cosine goes down and then up, and that it finishes, right? But instead of doing that 0 to 360, that's the regular period, it's going to do it from 0 to 180. So now again, I think about my stationary points, my endpoints, right? I'm going to start up here. Sorry, that's three. I'm going to start here at two, right? I'm going to come down to the middle of the graph, which is going to be the middle of this graph, right? From naught to 180 is the whole period, okay? So therefore, uh, about halfway down here, there's the bottom of the graph, right? So I'm visualizing it coming down, and it's going to do the opposite coming up to 180, right? So it looks like about there. You okay with that? So there's my down, up, that's one complete cycle. <coughs> then I just need to repeat it, that's all I need to do. So you can see uh, over here it's going to be negative 2, okay? and it should finish up here at positive 2. And then I just join the dots. Okay? So. Oh, yeah. Ta-da! Okay, so. Here are my two wave functions. Here are the two things I'm going to add together. Okay? Now, think again. When we're doing addition and subtraction of ordinates, think about the easy places. The easy places. Okay? So think about any roots. Think about the roots, right? Anytime you get an x-intercept, for example, here, right? you're going to have 0 plus something. As it happens, it's 2. So 0 plus 2 is 2. Yeah? As I move over, right, I'm going to have another 0 plus something else. Okay, so I'm going to be passing through there. Okay. I'll move over. Where else have I got a, a root? Well, I see one here and here. I've got a, another pair there and there. So I've got here and here. Okay. Now, I've done the first half of the graph. When I look at the second half, um, the roots are here, here, and here. There are three more to deal with, right? This one is this plus a negative number. So you're going to go down. Do you see that? So it looks to me like somewhere like there. <coughs> there, my symmetry is not the greatest. And then I finish there. 
So I've dealt with all of the x-intercepts of my component graphs. Does that make sense? Okay, there are a couple other important points that I can look at. Um, look at those, look at those, um, before I get to that, I'm going to go look at the turning points. Look at the turning points in my component graphs. They're pretty important, aren't they? Okay. Um, they're not only important, but I happen to know because it's a trig function, I know exactly where they are as well. Okay, so for instance, here I've got 3 and it coincides with negative 2. So when you add 3 and negative 2, you get 1. one. So I know exactly where that is. That should be there. Does that make sense? Uh, in exactly the same way, I've got another pair of stationary points coinciding here. So I've got, well, let's have a look here. This is negative 2 and this is negative 3. So when you add them, you get negative 5 all the way down the bottom. <coughs> and you know it's all the way down the bottom because that's the lowest that both graphs can get. So you put them together and that's the lowest. <coughs> it's the absolute minimum, in other words. Okay? And then my last one is, okay, where do the graphs intersect? Because you just take those points and then you either double um, or you, no, you, you do double. Okay? Actually, sorry, take that back. It's my second last thing. So here are my two points of intersection. Right? So when you add these, they should be double the height. Is that okay? So it looks like I'm getting a point here and a point there. Okay, now that was the second last one. The very last one is not where they intersect, where they are the same vertically upwards, but where they are opposites, like vertically up and vertically down, um, a matching amount. Okay. So with a ruler, again, I would look at, looks to me somewhere like here, right? So for instance, if I draw it in about here and here, those lengths look roughly equivalent, do they not? And I can say roughly because this whole argument is visual, so it doesn't need to be precise. Okay. You can actually find out, it's not hard to solve for when that is equal, we could do that later if you like. And correspondingly, I've got another point around here where maybe this vertical and this vertical look about the same. So they're going to cancel because one is positive, one's negative, one is positive, one's negative. So when you add them, you get zero. Okay? So therefore, I've got an actual intercept there and an actual intercept there. Okay, hurrah. Now I've gone through all the points. And look, that's a lot of points, right? You don't need to know anything else apart from this. You can just join the dots. So let's do it. <laughs> if that's the sound you want to make while joining the dots, then you can be my guest. <laughs> okay. What do you think? Okay. Now, okay. It's weird, isn't it? It is weird, but that's okay. Noting that both graphs um, are actually going to repeat every 360 degrees. I know this one's going to repeat every 180, but that just means he repeats twice every 360 degrees. Therefore, if I draw, drew this and kept going, what happens the next thing after here? Well, it just does this, doesn't it? It's going to do another, another up, and then down, and then up, and then, and then back down, and then you're back. Another camel. Yeah, exactly, kind of. Double, double hump camel. Okay. <coughs> So that's, that's not that hard. As you go logically through, think carefully about the ordinates and how they're behaving. Okay? <laughs>